to be tying a awesome little steelhead fly. Uh, this is a little tube fly called the Thunder and Lightning. Um, works equally as well on a Scandi head or a Skagit head. I think it's really versatile. Um, fun fly to tie, really nice fly to fish, uh, an Atlantic salmon fly that uh, we can easily adapt to our Northwest Steelhead rivers, uh, especially when they have a little color late August. Uh, mid to late August, you know, on the Cligatat, uh, anytime White River blows out on the Deschutes, uh, not necessarily blows, but just has some color to it. It's just a little bigger profile, but um, just a really nice fly. Um, so I've got a piece of Pro Classic tubing. I kind of burnish the end a little bit. This is size medium and just straight up clear. Uh, the only reason I burnt the end a little bit is just to kind of make it a little more aesthetically pleasing instead of just having this rough cut. Um, on the rear it just kind of finishes it out really nice let's put it on the mandrel tiny thread this is vivas tenna and black and i'm gonna just leave a little bit on the back end here uh, maybe a quarter inch something like that threads on we're gonna create a little tag this is oval tinsel silver and small Tie that in, make three wraps real tight. One, two, three real tight wraps. Bring it up, tie it off. And we're going to tie it off tight. Clip it. Uh, our tag, once I can find it here, our tag is. This SSS hollow braid and hot magma yellow. Clip off a little bit of that. Tie her in. Need to leave a little bit of a gap to make sure you can make room for the fold over. I'm going to tie this in real tight. I'm going to try to make this pretty darn skinny. Okay. Tie that off. Next, our rib. It's oval. medium silver tinsel. Tie this in at the bottom. And we're just going to wrap up to the where we're going to stop our body. Which would be about... Now you can make this fly as big as you want. Um, for summer fly, you know, I'm not going to tie it that big, but this would be equivalent to like a size four hook. And you can see this tube is condensing as I run my thread up, which is what I want. Is what that'll do is inherently make its own junction tubing as I condense it. This won't continue to collapse it will actually hold its shape so you can actually around this needle you can collapse this thing all together and butt it up against the needle with your thread that's why i like this classic tubing because it's really it's flexible you, you have a lot of options here um as far as how you want to use it but you can really tie this down against the mandrel and it will never seal up you can you can always get 12 pound maxima through it um, or whatever you like to use. I mean, I typically use uh, either Trout Hunter or SA fluorocarbon, just because that's what I like. Um, but it'll never close up around it. So, all right, our body, black ice dub, black UV ice dub. You can use floss. Um, I just I like the qualities of this ice dub. Um, since I'm tying a bigger, brighter fly. I do like the reflectiveness, but if you want to be um, more on the traditional the side of things, you would just use standard yellow floss for the tag and black floss for the body. I'm going to
going to dub this very thin on here. We want a really thin body, thin profile. adding as I go just so I don't add too much since the ice step collapses really well if you around the thread I mean um, if you get too much on it can be kind of a actually kind of a pain to get off all right so I'm going to stop here this is where I'm actually gonna I just wanted to collapse this tube in here because this is going to be my tie-off point. I didn't want it to be collapsing while I tied off feathers or tied in feathers. I wanted to pre-collapse just to make sure I get a really good bite on these things. Our body hackle is going to be hot orange strunk saddle. See what I mean right in there about pre-collapsing and I get a good bite. That's not going to keep wanting to collapse and fall out. So one full turn. One, two, three. And then what I'm going to do now is uh, I thought I had hackle pliers around here. I guess I don't. Oh, there we go. So I'm going to keep this down. I'm going to make one full wrap behind, give her a tightener, and then move up the hackle. And you can kind of fluff it out, wiggle your tinsel around, and it'll help get through these fibers and give it a good bite on the stem. I want to position it in such a way, if I can, that I tie off the tinsel on the top of the fly. Just like that. Okay. Come down, clip off. And then at this point, if you want, yeah, I lost my bodkin, but you can kind of come through and pick out any fibers that are kind of mashed by the, by the tinsel. Usually it's not a, too much of a problem if you just kind of take your time and spread it out really well. So our under hackle is going to be ringneck pheasant rump in black. So I'm going to just take a rump fiber, strip off the all the fluff we're going to tie it in tip first. And we're only going to get, you know, maybe two wraps out of this. This is going to be real sparse. The rest of the hackling is going to be really sparse. Tie that in. Use our scissors to prop these feathers rearward. Two and a half wraps, not bad, looks good. Hackle number two, blue eared pheasant. So usually this would be a large feather um, and the smaller sizes and medium works good. I'm gonna pick out a good one here. And we can just check length to make sure. I want the length to just extend just past the body. That looks really good there. So with the blue eared, I'm gonna. There's always a couple guys down in here that are broken. That looks good there. We'll peel that off. Get rid of the phyllo plume. This is just natural gray. You can use black if you'd like as well. I like the 
I like the contrast between the gray and the black here, so I'm just going to use gray and I'm going to tie it in tip first. Stroke them back, cut the tip, tie it in. Use your scissors to pin those fibers back. Once that's tied in, give it a good couple wraps. Okay, looking pretty darn good. Now, our last hackle will be Jumbo Guinea. This is Brilliant Blue. You can use Kingfisher Blue. Any blue. Brilliant Blue is what I have. So that's what I'm going to use. And we're only going to want a couple turns of this. We're not going to want a lot. So I'm just going to strip off most of this feather here. And I'm going to kind of take it from the gut, kind of in the middle. Somewhere in there. Clip, tip first, tie in, ignore the phone. And tie it in so we get one, two, which is perfect. Looks like we got a couple crazies in there, but we'll just get rid of here. I'm clip you guys off, give her a little fluff and see just kind of how things are going to end up. Once you fluff it out, bring it back, see how many crazies we got in here with the guinea. Guinea, man, guinea can go good or bad. There's really, this one actually ended up all in all pretty good, but man, every once in a while with these guinea feathers, you just get one that's just BAM! Like, bad haircut. Okay, so, we're looking pretty good here. Now, final touch is a little jungle cock. Uh, I, if you don't have a cape, you can use the um, Pro um, Pro JC, which is the Gen 3 pro stuff which is uh, really good actually it uh, gives the same effect as the natural stuff actually it's easier to tie in durability is probably the same jungle cock is actually a pretty durable feather all in all uh, I just happen to have the real stuff right now so I will use it we're just gonna measure how long we want and jungle cock on tubes actually is kind of a pain because it loves to roll. These stems are really thin. So it's another reason the Pro stuff, the Pro Gen 3, um, is, is easier to tie in on tubes, especially because it doesn't want to roll as bad. But I would recommend jungle cock on this fly in particular just because it does add it adds a lot um, to the overall. I mean, you can see this whole fly kind of takes a different form once you once you add the jungle cock. looks looks finished, looks complete. has some has some color, some variegation. All right, we'll tie those back. Do a little whip finish here.
cut our thread, cut our JC stems. Alright, we're going to pop her off. Cut it real close. And then give it a light burn. Okay. Now we just need to cement the flat. I'm using the Loon Hardhead. And we just let her set up and we're good. Got a thunder and lightning tube tied.